Here, focusing on Euler's theorem, and I should actually write Euler's theorem. Now, this theorem uh, is so fascinating to me because it tells us when we can or cannot draw a graph with one line. In other words, in this graph on the left, if I start here, and I try to draw each of these lines without retracing any of the others, can I do it? Let's just try it real quick. Draw up here, okay. Come down here, keep going. Things are looking good. And now I have a problem. If I go up here, I can't come back down to draw this line because then I have repeated this line right here. And if I went up here, well, to draw this line, I would have to come back down and repeat it. So no, I cannot draw this graph with one line. How about this one right here? Well, you might recognize this one. This is the, the classic Bridges of Konigsberg um, graph. And notice here I can't as well. Right, I can try. Keep going. I can try to do it. Okay, and now notice there's two edges left. And if I draw on this edge, I can't come back up to this edge without repeating myself. And if I came up to this edge up here, I couldn't come down to this edge without repeating myself. So both of these graphs cannot be drawn with a single line. And then we have graphs where you can. It's, it's more obvious. Like, Let's say we had a little rectangle, or a triangle, even. Rectangle and a triangle. Well, in these two cases, right, in these two shapes right here, we can walk around them and draw each line without repeating ourselves. So we can draw these with a single line. And this triangle can be done as well. These edges can be drawn right, without repeating ourselves. So this theorem, right, it's crazy because we can tie in all shapes, all graphs. What about these graphs make it so that we can draw them with one line? And what is it about these graphs that make it so we, we cannot draw them with one line? And I'm just blown away. Because how can we actually think about all the complexity, all the shapes that matter, and, and actually say, yes, you can draw this with a single line, or no, you cannot. And the way we do that, the way what Euler's thinking of, and we're just going to introduce the theorem here, is to look at the degree of the vertices. So if you remember, degrees of the vertices are the number of edges that go to that vertice. So here the degree would be 3. Here this degree of this vertice was 1, 2, 3 edges. It's 3. In fact, all of them are 3. And when all the edges were 3, we could not draw the shape of the single line. And here, well, let's label the degrees of these as well. They're 3, 3. Here this is 5. Here, this is 3, and we couldn't draw this shape with a single line. Now let's look at the degree of the edges in these two shapes. Well, each of the degrees in these shapes is what? Well, it's 2. And when Euler started to look at this, at some point he must have realized, probably pretty remarkably fast, just the way he dealt with mathematics in general, that, oh, it, whenever our edges, whenever the, sorry, whenever the degree of our vertices is two or even, we can somehow draw the shape right, without repeating ourselves. So if the degree is even, we can do it. But something about the odd, right? We cannot draw shapes with one line if the degree is odd. However, it's not that simple. Um, there's a little bit more to it. Um, so it's not just about odd and even. Let me get rid of this, and we'll, we'll look at a little bit more about what Euler realized. So I'm going to move this shape over here, make some more room. And I don't need this. I'm going to erase these degree labels here. Okay. So I think an important question to ask is, how can we change this graph so that it can be drawn with a single line? And that, I think, will really highlight uh, one of the greatest features of this theorem. If I draw a bridge from here to here, or an edge, what, what happens to the shape? Let's just start with the degrees of each of the vertices. So here, this degree and this vertice is now 3. It's odd. Here, we've changed it. So now it's 1, 2, 3, it's 4. Up here, it's also 1, 2, 3, 4. So by adding one edge, we change two odd degree vertices to two even degree vertices. And here, this is still, this vertice still has a degree of five. So now, 
here we have two vertices with an even degree and two vertices with an odd degree, and we haven't encountered that yet. So can we draw this shape with one line? And the answer is absolutely yes. And that's interesting to me. Well, let's just draw it first. Come up here. All right, we draw across this bridge. Maybe we go around our new edge right up here. Keep going, keep going, keep going. We're doing great. Come back up here, and we can walk across that one. So in this classic model, the Bridges of Konigsberg, if we had one edge right here, we can now draw it. So what happened? Well, in this case right here, when there were two vertices with an odd degree, we were able to draw the graph in a single line. And now I think we're ready to hear the theorem. The first part of the theorem seems obscure. It seems like it's not needed, but the fact is quite powerful, and later will become a great tool when we're trying to deal with tougher graphs and more interesting graphs. The first thing Euler said is that in order for a graph to be drawn with a single line, it actually has to be connected. So the graph has to be connected. And going back, that just means there's no part of the graph that's isolated. So like um, in this graph that we just drew, if I drew another set of vertices and an edge, notice there's no way to get from our purple drawing to this line right here. There's no vertice that connects them. So that's a disconnected graph. So let me erase that. So the graph has to be connected in order for you to be able to draw it with a single line. And the second part is, is really, I think, stunning. It says that, he said that the number of vertices is an odd number well, let me, sorry, the number of vertices in a graph look, I'm running out of room the number of vertices in the graph I think I can fit it whose degree is odd oh boy is zero or two so what he's saying is that you can tell if a graph can be drawn with a single line if you notice that it's connected and the number of vertices in the graph whose degree is odd is zero in other words there's no vertices with an odd degree like our square and triangle right no no vertices whose degree is odd, it's zero, or there's two of them, exactly two. Like this case right here, where there were one, two vertices of odd degree. And isn't that amazing? All the graphs you can think of, it boils down to this simple example. And we'll prove it and talk about it a little bit in the next video, but as long as you have exactly two vertices of odd degree, or none, you can draw the shape with a single line. And the introduction to this theorem, which makes it a little bit more formal, is that a graph can be drawn with a single line if and only if the following two conditions are met. So both of these things are, happen ha are happening. And that's the theorem. And we'll look at a bunch of different graphs to test this out and see if this actually works. But I love it because Regardless of how the complicated the graph is or what it's applying to, we only have to really see if it's connected and see if the number of vertices in the graph whose degree is, is the number of vertices in the graph um, that are odd, whose degree is odd, is, is either 0 or 2. All right. Thanks.